All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dan. This is how to start a trade business part two. Let's get into it. Now, I know these business videos aren't for everybody. I know there's probably only a small amount of you guys that click onto it. But for those of you who are getting something out of it, I want to continue to make these because the guys that do get something out of it, it really does seem to help them. Hopefully, as the channel grows, the audience will grow with it and there'll be more people that will get something from it. In saying that, if you are one of the people, do us a favor, hit like and subscribe, and maybe share it to someone that's in a similar position to you. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's dive right in. If you watch part one, we went through all the back end work in setting up a business, registering the name, insurances, finances, all that boring shit. So in this episode, we're going to talk about the stuff that the general public see. Your logo, your branding, your tool setup, and how you are interacting with the general public. Let's just pretend for a second that we're creating a carpentry company, um, YouTube, YouTube carpentry, like YT Carpentry. That's going to be the name of our business, all right? So, so I'm going to set up YT Carpentry for you guys today and show you the steps that I'd go through in, um, in making it all happen and you know making this business come to life. So let's start with the logo. That right there is my logo. I'm on to something simple and that's about as simple as you can get. That's a letter V. You don't have to go crazy with your logo, but you definitely do need one. Now, if you wanna know where to go, first thing I would do is see if any of your mates have graphic design skills it's always good to support your mates if they're also starting out in a business but on from that you could look up 99 designs and fiverr these are places you can go where you can put up a short brief about what you're trying to achieve give them some guidelines like what your style is do you want something that looks rustic or super clean and modern and from there they will send your logos back now you do want to be getting yourself a high quality pdf file a transparent png file and also a vector that means it can be shrunk down or blown up to a billboard size and it's not going to lose any quality so whoever you're getting your logo from make sure you got those three formats and if you got those you should be pretty much covered for anything you need that logo for now once you have your logo in your hand we got our brand new yt carpentry logo you can now take this logo and put it everywhere i'm talking invoices quotes websites business cars throw it on your vehicle, get stickers made up, put them on your tools, shirts, hoodies, beanies, like put it everywhere. This is you. You're trying to project yourself out into the world. So the logo is pretty important. It really helps dictate your whole image. Now, if you do want to get the ball rolling, you can actually just Google like tradie starter packs or business card packs. There are often lots of local print companies that will do your logo or if you've got your logo from elsewhere, they will do your business cards. They will do your sign writing, stickers, shirts, hoodies, all of it. And you can just go to one place and they'll hook you up. You should have no problem finding a company that offer these services. All right, for your websites, you either want to pay someone to create one for you, or you just want to get something super simple like Wix or Squarespace. I'm currently using Wix for mine. It does the job. I used to have Squarespace. It's kind of the same. Wix is a little bit more drop and drag, and it's a little bit more user friendly, but they've both got awesome templates. Or yeah, pay someone to do it, but you could be up for a bit of cash for that. But a website is essential in my opinion. Now, whoever you're getting your website from should also be able to supply you with a custom domain. So we're gonna get ytcarpentry.com or .net or whatever. And on top of that, you'll be able to get a custom email. So now you won't have to do Dan's Carpentry at fucking 
yahoo.com. Now you can have something more professional like info at ytcarpentry.com. So once you've got your website and your email all sorted, now I suggest you get on board with social media. Your two main ones are Facebook and Instagram. I don't know if you're young, you may want to jump on a TikTok. According to Gary V, everyone's on TikTok. Let me tell you why for everybody TikTok matters. Now this can sometimes be hard when you're setting up a new business, but you do want to try and get some high quality images, if possible, of your work. I know it can be hard when you're first starting out, but yeah, people are drawn to images that look nice. So, so that is definitely something you'll have to work on in the early days. All right, now onto tools. I'm assuming most of you guys have done an apprenticeship um, and have built up a toolkit in that time. So you should be pretty good to go with tools. If not, I wouldn't stress too much. It's something that you can incrementally build on. You don't need to start with every single tool under the sun, so don't worry about it. Now, if you're doing a specialty type of job and you need a specific tool to complete it, just get the price of that tool and just incorporate that into your quote. This is a good way of building out your toolkit and it's not coming out of your pocket. I wouldn't stress about tools. It's easy to build that up as you grow. Now you need to ask yourself, wait, I need a super beer. Now you do need to ask yourself, who is your potential client? Who do you want to be working for? Do you just want to be working for a builder? And you know, you may have three or four builders on the go and they just flick you work. Or, or do you want to work direct to consumer or direct to client? Now, if you are working directly for the client and not for a builder, well, this is where your image is a lot more important. If you're working for a builder, it doesn't matter as much. As long as the builder likes you and you do a good job, you're gonna to continue to get work. And having a couple of builders, they can be a constant source of work for your company. But if you're working directly for clients, then your image is fairly important because you need to win over new people all the time. So coming across as professional is really going to impact your work. So YT Carpentry is working direct to client. You need to kind of ask yourself, what does your client look like are they 35 to 50 year old professionals or are they 65 year old retirees it's great to know who your target audience is so a very typical customer of mine would be in the age of 35 to 50 years old they work really long hours and they don't have the time don't have the skill set either so this is why they're hiring us to do it Hmm, story time. So I was working with one of these clients. They were a super successful like business person earning six figures and we were chatting and, and he was telling me how he had such a hard time finding good trades. They, they spoke to like two or three other tradespeople. They just told me that these tradespeople never turned up on time. When they did, they'd rock up on site and they'd have shit all over them, just putting a ciggy out as they pulled the car up. Winnie Blues, mate. Yeah, you always suck these down long and hard, mate. Make sure to never like exhale. Like that typical tradesperson, you know? And then he was kind of saying like, Dan, I don't understand these trade guys. They're not turning up on time. They never deliver what they promise. And they're trying to sell their services to me, a corporate professional guy, and all these guys wear suits and they're in meetings day in and day out. And whilst he didn't expect them to go to that level, he's like, I just wish they put in like just a little, just a little bit of effort, you know? So that's just a little bit of food for thought. I normally just throw like a button up shirt in my car, a clean pair of shoes that aren't covered in mud and turn up on time. That's a big thing with us tradies, always running late. I don't know. That's just something you guys might want to keep in mind. I thought it was worth mentioning, but yeah, anyway. So once you've got your potential client figured out, then you can really figure out what way you need to steer your business, whether that is networking with builders or whether that is trying to appeal to a, a customer base that's located in your community. And that is about it. If you're just starting out, man, it's time to get out there. It's time to work your ass off, build up a solid reputation and just keep moving forward. You're definitely gonna have fuck ups. Every business owner has been through it, but you just got to keep moving forward.
Anyway, let me know what you guys think. If you're thinking about starting a business, let's connect on Instagram. I'd love to hear about it. I'll also be hanging out in the comments below if you want to chat about it. I hope this video has been a little bit of help. If it has, please share it with someone you know that might be in the same position. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.